This is Lance, the king of black metal from Witch Taint, the greatest black metal band or any kind of band of all time, basically. And you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast, fucker. Hey, you are listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. I am Bruce. And I am unprepared. I mean, Chris. Today, we've got a really good one. Not that they're all... Not really good, but this is a, a funny one. I don't know if you're familiar with Witch Taint. I know I sent you the uh I saw the video. video. <laughs> yeah, that was killer. <laughs> Not only is it killer, killer music, but the video is hysterical. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I so I am looking forward to talking to uh who are we talking to today? We are talking to Lance, the king of black metal. The the king of black metal that rides a BMX bike. A BMX bike. Yeah. So if you want to hang out, we'll go ahead and get him on the line and see what he's got to say. Cool. Well, let's uh, let's just jump right in. I don't even know know where to start, but I got that first video where you guys are riding on the bikes. Oh and, yeah, um, Satan. And I was totally blown away. That's not only is it great music, but it's so comedic. Is that? I mean, I guess that was your intent from the start. Well, we just set out to be the greatest uh, heavy metal band of all time, and I feel like we accomplished it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, with, with no disrespect to, you know, all the bands that, you know, that we we respect like at least five or six other heavy metal bands. So <laughs> with, with no disrespect to any of those bands, you know, Black Sabbath and <laughs> Judas Priest and, you know, if you, I don't know. You always know something's going to be wrong. I don't mean any disrespect, but. Yeah, but most <laughs> most other bands are horrible compared to us is what I, you know. Okay, so I have a question. It's all why relative, why yeah. a BMX bike instead of like a muscle car? Oh well, my my, I can't. I I'm not allowed to. Neither one of us are allowed to drive at the moment. <laughs> uh, I I'm not. I don't have my license. And uh, Matthias backwards. Uh, it's some some law legal thing. I don't know something. I guess it, I don't even know how it affected his driving record, but he, he got into <laughs> trouble for something. You know, honestly, I would describe it as an innocent sight gag <laughs> with a cucumber. <laughs> and uh, I don't think, you know, I legally, our lawyer told us not to really get into it. But uh, yeah, basically, we can't drive. It's the long and short of it. And. Even if I could drive, my mother wouldn't let me borrow the minivan for very long. <laughs> anyway, so bikes are kind of our normal way of getting around town, you know, when we're just going going out to kick some ass and things like what that. Is, what does your mom think about the uh, Sons of Satan there, the song? Uh, she, well, I think she knows that Witch Tain is the best band. I mean, definitely, like, <laughs> I think, like, you know, if she had to pick her favorite black metal band, it would be Witch Taint. And, you know, basically, I mean, put it, put, it, put it to you this way. Like, basically, anyone, you can ask anyone in, in Gary, in, Indiana, who the king of black metal is. <laughs> and they'll, say, they'll tell you right away, it's me. Like, even my mom the other day asked my dad. You know, she's like, hey, have you seen the King of Black Metal? And she was totally talking about me. So <laughs> I don't know. So I, I haven't really, I don't come up out of the basement that often, to be honest. Right. But uh, where in Indiana did you say you were? Gary, Gary Indiana. It's kind of more of like a sh- suburb of Chicago. It's, it's um, well, it's best known for being the hometown of Witch Taint. But I mean, the next. The next best thing or next most famous thing is, you know, it's where Michael Jackson and the rest of the Jacksons are from. Right. And when you think of black metal, nobody thinks of Oslo or or Bergen. They're totally thinking of Gary, Indiana. No, I mean, in terms of I mean, since Witch Taint has become a fully realized thing, you know, Oslo and Bergen in terms of black metal or what I would call tertiary markets. <laughs> you know, that's beautiful. And you know, we we w- originally the plan was, you know, I don't know if you know the whole history of Witch Taint. No, please enlighten us. Well, you can. This is 
basically the band started in my mind uh, and it existed <laughs> mostly just in my mind. It started, you can look this up online on the internet. <laughs> Uh, I don't, I don't have a, I don't get to use my mom's computer more than like a couple hours a day, but, uh, you can do this, go to the black metal dialogues.com in about 2003 or so, Witch taint, uh, came into, I started Witch taint and it was like a solo, you know, one man black metal band. And I had, uh, you know, I had other side, pro- I had my dungeon synth project, uh, <laughs> summer's summer's eve and uh i had some other you know other black metal side projects um uh unholy chalice mysticum with a k and uh, <laughs> and anyway so witch taint but basically in 2004 even though i hadn't written any music whatsoever uh for witch taint i decided to get a record contract for the band and i emailed <laughs> a norwegian uh black metal record label that was home to mysticum with the c the <laughs> oslo band that some people know about and so those emails went on for like six months and somehow they wound up on the internet after you know but i did record one dem- demo uh with my friend john aka come lord two <laughs> and that was for the the lone witch taint demo, which is called Necro Dream Raper, um, <laughs> which is unreleased. You know, it uh, it's so rare and underground. Like I have to do a search on my mom's computer to even find it. <laughs> Though you can, it is actually on YouTube if you search. Uh, if you search. Uh, Necro Dream Raper Witch Taint. You can you can hear the original demo. It's there. You might, al- you might also find some other things you don't you can't look up at work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I need to, you know some people uh, in the uh, you know especially in the um, Central Europe, Central Southern European metal media have complained that the word raper is in the title but uh <laughs> we just mean it you know when i wrote it i meant like rape rape in terms of rape the land not in terms of you know raping a, a person so you know i it's see a, the difference right you know it, it all comes down to <laughs> i didn't mean to get into semantics during this interview but you know <laughs> really more of a semantic issue Man, you already pulled out the word tertiary that's like the biggest <laughs> that's, a, that's that's the biggest vocabulary we've ever had on this show. <laughs> Chris yeah. actually had to go to look it up. <laughs> I gotta be honest, like I'm on a medication that some of the side effects oh, no. is um <laughs> is a, a, a expanded vocabulary. So a lot of times <laughs> uh, words come out that I'm not even familiar with. But then I go back and read the interview or listen to the interview, and I was like, oh wow, that totally made sense. <laughs> but um wait to, so, so to the, getting back to the email so anyway i emailed you know in the email the the head of the label uh was this guy say tom which <laughs> uh if you're paying close attention is the name matthias backwards so <laughs> anyway so then after you know th- those emails came out in 2005 and you can see them at read them at the black metal dialogues.com and they're hundred percent real and you know the band instantly uh had a very underground cult fan base worldwide and i sold didn't the band was dormant and this is like the good thing about being uh the greatest black metal band of all time is we really can't lose no matter what happens like if we're really busy and do a lot that's great, but if we do absolutely nothing, that's even better, really, in terms <laughs> of black metal. So, you know, which is why I chose to uh, not do anything with Witch Taint other than sell T-shirts um, until 2017. And, you know, in the me- meantime, you know, we got some <laughs> high-profile fans. You know, Reed Mullen from Corrosion and Conformity was a big Witch Taint fan. Phil Anselmo, uh, oh, yeah, might have heard of. He uh, 
has been a big Witch Tane fan for years. Sean, he's sold from White Zombie. So we were all already, even with the one demo and a string of emails and a couple t-shirts that I drew, we were already <laughs> like a pretty legendary band for a long time. And then in 2017, uh, Matthias Backwards, my partner in the band, I mean, we're not dating, we're just, you know, musical... <laughs> He's honestly my worst enemy and my arch nemesis, in addition to being, you know, one of my close friends. But uh, <laughs> we we read the emails on stage at St. Vitus in Brooklyn, which yeah. is super far from uh, Gary, Indiana. But uh, David Castillo over there offered us a uh, drink ticket, so we did it. <laughs> um and uh, so it was a real, you know, me from Indiana and Matthias backwards coming from Oslo, like the commute was really bad, but, you know, it took off right away and we did it again at St. Vitus. And then the third show was at South by Southwest mm -hmm. in Austin, Texas. And uh, we did it there and it was sold out uh, our third show ever. And then we did it a <laughs> few more times. And, and by this time we had started to add like Tain of the Witch, the last song, I think, on the album. Mm -hmm. Before the bonus tracks, so that we that was part of that show. And then Changes was added shortly after that. And then Are You Ready to Black Metal? And we we had another song called I Shall Rape the New Age. Um, <laughs> and again, uh, it's... And that song, the word rape is just is not used in the sense. It's meant, you know, figuratively and uh, not like a violent sexual attack. But that song was about, you know, if you read those old emails, uh, Matthias was complaining about black metal music that was uh, new age with keyboards and stuff. So I wrote the song, I Shall Rape the New Age. Uh <laughs> And those, that song is about how I plan to rape the new age. Um, figuratively. Yeah, yeah, figuratively. <laughs> and so anyway, we did. then we did the show in... Uh, I'll, spe I'll speed up this story, or you can cut out all this. Uh, <laughs> uh, we did the show in London, then we got invited to do it in Oslo uh, at the Crap Comedy Festival. I don't know why they booked a black metal band. Uh, <laughs> into the crap comedy festival, but it's the biggest comedy festival in Norway. And, um, and somehow, I don't know they made a mistake and booked us, but the cool thing about it was, uh, Fenris from dark throne was in the front row of that show. And, uh, and he loved it. And, uh, he, we played, he said our music sounded like, uh, bulldozer and, I think destruction or pile driver. I can't remember, but anyway, it was high praise. And uh, then from there, we did, in 2018 we did the Vakken Festival, which is um, an up and coming uh, heavy metal festival. <laughs> right, <people. laughs> right. It's new. I heard yeah, about that. Not a lot of people know about it, but uh, we think it's going to grow from just based on our experience. <laughs> uh, but we did. We were the only band on the whole festival that performed all four days uh so take take that mr big um right <laughs> and anyway when we were you know standing out in the middle of the field in germany and you know we we had our own tent because i think they thought that no one none of the other bands could handle being on the same stage as us even after we left uh so they gave us our own tent right in the middle of everything and people would come and see us. And, uh, I think a lot of people were really confused why two guys in corpse paint, uh, were standing there reading from laptops and only playing like four songs in an hour. <laughs> so, Cause then we would read the emails on state. We would read the whole emails that you can read at that, the black metal dialogues.com. We would read those anyway. So people were really confused. And then, you know, but they would go nuts when we would play the music. And that's when we were like, when we get back home to America, we should finish, you know, we should make a whole record. So that's what we did. And uh, now it's finally out. And uh, I don't know how, if you've had a chance to listen to it yet, but it's the greatest um, 
uh, I guess I'm simplifying it to say it's the greatest black metal record or greatest heavy metal record of all time. But I, you know, <laughs> I I would say it's probably the greatest record of all time. Period. You know, wow, that's yeah, that's <laughs> I I could see that. Yeah. So I, I have a question. What's it like? Yeah. What's it like being in a black metal band in Indiana? Uh, well, <laughs> it's not ideal for some things, you know, because um, it's it's mostly like a, you know, it's the Midwest, so it's mostly flat land. Uh, so it makes it much harder to sort of scamper about in the mountains and hills <laughs> and things. Yeah, like where, do you, where do you get the band pictures from? Uh, we go out on my deck. <laughs> <laughs> Is it your deck or your mom's deck? Well, I mean, it's it's the deck at the house that my mom right, and I so It's technically yours, together. too. Yeah, so you, I mean, you tell me. Uh, you know, semantics. But honest, but, yeah, no, semantics. I, I just remember driving through Indiana, and there's signs all over the interstate. If Jesus had a gun, he'd still be alive, and stuff like that. I was just like, okay, what's it like being in a black metal band in a place like that? Well, I think, you know... By the next time you drive through Indiana, you'll see that all of those signs will have been replaced by witch taint. Uh, <laughs> and that's witch taint. If, I mean, it's going to take time because, you know, to those billboards, I know the ones you're talking about, they're pretty big. And, you know, because, uh, you know, I'm not like a professional sign maker. What I did was I just print them out at Kinko's on eight and a half by 11 <laughs> So to do one billboard, <laughs> that's like, it's like a thousand pieces of paper. <laughs> Three you know. weeks of allowance. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you take a thousand pieces of paper, 10 cents a sheet, you know. because they to mention the glue, right? With how you put them up there. Yeah, and you can only do, you know, I go up at night and I put, you know, as many as I can, but. It's going to take me a while, but I'll get it done, is my point. <laughs> but yeah, and it's hard, like, um, you know, just like the basics of life when you're, the like, the king of black metal as I am, you know, go, <laughs> like, you've got to, you know, it's hard to be extreme and brutal when, like, you're shopping for groceries and stuff, so. But I, but I would think the king of all black metal should have, you know, uh, servants or people to do that kind of stuff for him, right? Well, I mean, my mom will sometimes like bring a sandwich down to the basement, <laughs> if that's what you're talking about. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, I basically do, but that's pretty much, other than that, I rarely eat uh, just because I don't want to be, well, I, I do work part-time at Subway, so a lot of, you know, <laughs> right. I, I'm not going to say, I can't really say because uh, I don't want to get You'd be fired, right. No, let's, I get it. let's just say uh, I have as many teriyaki, teriyaki chicken subs as I want. <laughs> <laughs> so are you nice. saying you work, the king of black metal works at Subway? Part time. <laughs> <That's the key. laughs> oh, it's man. not full time. <laughs> okay. Where, where can... my, my, my real job is playing music in Witch Taint, but I, you know, I just. All right. I got work. a question for you. Yeah. Since you're a sandwich maker, is a hot dog a sandwich? Well, that's the age-old question, isn't it? <laughs> um, that's in the book know, of black metal. <laughs> yeah, you know. You can that, look it up online. Yeah, honestly, like, you know, I, I didn't want to bring up lesser bands, but, uh, you know, basically the first Gorgoroth record is pretty much... That's what it's only about, you know, the hot dog. Uh, the co yeah, that whole controversy, right? <laughs> yeah, if you listen closely to the lyrics on the first Gorgor Gorgoroth record, I mean, that's they kind of answered the question. <laughs> and, uh, no, no, it's not a sandwich. So you're saying all our viewers, if they really want to know the answer to that, they need to go listen to some Norwegian black metal. Well, no, I don't think that they should go listen to Gorgoroth. Uh, Especially since Gall is out of the band, even though he didn't sing on the first record, but I, you know, I, Basically. Fine, I don't know. I, you know, I guess you got to let your ears cool off after listening to Witch Taint. <laughs> so if people want to, you know, just as a uh, palate cleanser, go listen to like a pussy band like Gorgoroth, that's fine. <laughs> 
All right. So lastly, it was, since we're talking about soup and you are the king of uh, Subway and all black metal, is uh, is cereal a soup? Oh, you know, I, I'm going to say this is when I, where my professionalism kicks in. Mm-hmm. Good. Uh, and uh, no, it's not. It's not. A, oh, Jesus. Why do people keep <laughs> asking me this? No. <laughs> No, I mean, you know, it comes in a bowl. Yeah, actually, yeah, I think it's a soup. I don't know why I fought it that hard. I mean, it's a, it might be the best soup depending on, on the cereal in question. You know, like if you got like Frosted Flakes or something. Yeah, that's pretty good. Plus, like soup is bullshit. I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> Like, have you ever had a bowl of soup when you were like, yep, this is exactly what I want to be happening right I've now? I've never fucking understood soup. I fucking hate soup. Sometimes you have it and you're like, yeah, I guess this will do in a pinch since apparently there's no real food available. <laughs> but, but, what, but wait, like my wife and everybody, they like, you know, tomato soup and grilled cheese. What about that? Well, you're doing it for the grilled cheese with dipping sauce. You could just use ketchup in that case. No, yeah. no, no, no. Wait, are you saying the ketchup is tomato soup? It's just thicker tomato soup. Well, you can make really uh, a gross tomato soup out of some ketchup and hot water. I mean, that's how I survived. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I survived uh, during the the intermittent years bef- while Witch Taint was like inactive. That's how I survived. So we got two new questions, Bruce. Can you make toma- yeah. can you make tomato soup <laughs> out of ketchup and hot water? And B is tomato soup really just ketchup? Right. No, so- I mean that's a, that's insanity to to make that sort of leap. Yeah. Uh, so my last question, and it came from my wife the other day. She uh, suggested I ask this one. Why do you think they put round pizzas in a square box? <laughs> Oh, well, that's easy. Uh, they, they tried to do round boxes for a very long time, but uh, the, just the, uh, the injuries in the manufacturing. <laughs> I mean, because yeah, I heard they were sometimes pretty brutal. Yeah, I mean, you want to see a paper cut uh, that'll wind land you in the e- e- ER. You try to put together a round. Because the problem is there's no edge, and you kind of slip off it, and you can go right into uh, right into the meat cooler. Any sorts, all sorts of things can happen. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have anything else, Chris. You got anything else? I do. Yeah, one more. How many times do you guys have to chain up your bikes in the video? <laughs> well, um, we didn't. We would just set them down and and. Uh, you know, if anyone came near them, like we did go into a Seven Eleven at one point and we <laughs> left them and uh, Matthias backwards just went, someone was walking up to him and he just opened the door and was like, hey, those are our bikes. And uh, that's all it took. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> Plus, like, you know, the problem with those, you know, they're pretty sweet bikes, but uh, they are for 12 year olds. So they were very hard <laughs> to pedal. So. If you were to see them lying around, you would have to be a small child to really want them. Uh, right. You know, we. Uh, I, uh, to be honest, when things take off, you know, and I, I'm pretty sure they're going to uh, explode just uh, just based on uh, some of the Facebook likes we've gotten this morning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that. Uh, you know, we'll get some new sweeter bikes if you can imagine that. You know, no, I'm thinking I mean, of getting on. They're pretty jacked, right? They're pretty jacked, but I'm thinking of getting one of those three wheel bikes so I don't have to worry about <laughs> right. well, bal- balancing as much. Yeah, no, I get that. Because it's one of those things, you know, they say it takes like seven muscles to smile or something, and then like 437 to frown. Right. And. It's the same way with balancing a bike, like your brain power. Like if you have a three wheeled bike, you like your brain is like, oh, thank God, you know. 
<laughs> Plus, uh, I mean, two is good, but three is always better, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, <laughs> you know, look at the classic lineup of Motorhead. I mean, there you get into a question of four versus three, but, you know, you see my point. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that was one, great. This, this podcast is about nothing. So yeah. we're like the Seinfeld of metal podcasts. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, so the same time next week? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, thank you for taking the time. I appreciate it.